Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. As expected, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced the splitting of ESCOM into three independent entities during his State of the Nation address. Terence Creamer joins me to unpack what this could mean. Hi Terence. Hi Snow. Why did the President move ahead with this restructuring plan? Well, the context is a dire financial and operational uh, circumstance at ESCOM, which has been deteriorating now for over a decade. And we know that their debt levels have risen to over 400 billion rand, 420 billion rand, from around 40 billion 10 years ago. So it's a massive uptick. We know that operationally they're still struggling. So we went into load shedding towards the tail end of last year, and the risk remains. And the new build, uh, the prognosis there from output from the, the Madupi and Kusili is not good. You know, those units are supposed to be closer to 800 megawatt units, between 700 and 800 megawatt units. The current prognosis from the units that have come into commercial operation is more like the 500 megawatt type level. So on a number of fronts, and then the, the, the financial uh, front is where they're making massive losses, 20 billion rand for this current financial year that they're in. And they're saying without a very large tariff increase, the, uh, the loss is going to be similar in the 1920 financial year. So it's, it's a dire circum uh, situation at Eskom. Uh, there's a view that Eskom might um, be overstaffed as well. That is contested quite heavily by Eskom uh, because the, the report that that is based on is a World, World Bank report. And that World Bank report did have some calculation uh, difficulties in it or some anomalies in it, which Eskom has contested. But there is a level of overstaffing, maybe not to the level that World Bank report uh, has suggested. But there's no doubt that South Africans feel there's, there's this overstaffing. And of course, there's the corruption and fraud element that's happened. And that's it's been the center of state capture uh, in South Africa. And I think there's a lot of frustration around the way Eskom has been operating and has been a, a sort of a, a piggy bank for some uh, well-connected individuals. So on many fronts, Eskom has become a risk to the South African economy and uh, its financial predicament has come to the fore and has become a risk to the consumer, the taxpayer, and ultimately you know, to uh, the, the economic functioning because of the downsides of having availability disruptions. What is this likely to mean practically at the utility and for customers? Well, I think the devil is going to be in the detail. So what the president has announced is the splitting of the generation transmission and distribution businesses under Eskom Holdings. So this isn't a a privatization exercise, but I think what the, what the idea is is to create very independent mm -hmm. businesses uh, that, that are naturally split. Um, now, generation we know is the problem child at the moment. That's where the, uh, the the losses are being made. That's where the debt has been accumulated. Um, what is important, I think, from the the uh, announcement is that that the important that the importance given to the grid company uh, in in the state uh, in the state of the nations saying that we need a, a, a transmission system operator type to, to be developed and that won't just hold the wires business which is the, the key to sort of unlocking generation evacuating uh, generation around the country but uh, is also key to planning, it's going to have the planning and the operating the system and the pro procurement and buying, buying functions. So there was some detail given around the transmission company. Where there's a lack of detail is really around how the debt is going to be spread across these different uh, entities. But I suppose because that's all going to be under one holding company, I that, that won't necessarily change immediately. And also how structurally uh, we don't have the tail wagging the dog. So generation being the biggest problem and have possibly having the biggest debt load, uh, basically calling the shots when actually at the heart of the system it should be the transmission system operator. So there's a lot of water to flow under the bridge and a lot of clarity that we still need. Um, but I think it was more about signaling that the current structure, the business model of ESC and the vertically integrated model is not really fit for purpose as the, uh, as the electricity system transitions from a centralized coal-based system to one that's going to be more decentralized and more renewables based. Do you think this will be sufficient to place ESCOM on a sustainable footing? Well, I think it's all going to be about managing this transition uh, in ESCOM, uh, not just the big transition that I'm talking about from coal to renewables, from centralized to decentralized 
But I think there's a really r big problem internally around morale at the moment. Um, the unions are not on board. Uh, they have made it very clear, both uh, the Kasatu unions, which are supposed to be allies of the African National Congress, are not happy with the restructuring uh, plan as announced. And then those outside of Kasatu, like NUMSA, have suggested they're going to take to the streets to oppose this. So I think it's very much important message uh, that the president gave is that there's going to be meaningful consultation with Labour and Eskom staff. And I think they do feel like they've been left out. Uh, there's a lot of mistrust around this process. There's a lot of feeling that uh, they are being scapegoated, I think, during this process of, uh, you know, for instance, going to the regulator and being told that they're massively overstaffed and inefficient. So I think that's going to be very important to navigate, to get labor and Eskom workers on side, because ultimately these are the people that are going to have to, we're going to have to rely on to make sure that this work works. And I think they have been left in the cold for some time. And I think South Africans have not very much sympathy for Eskom staff. But in the end, this, you have to work with the people that are there. The people that are there aren't happy. They are skeptical and suspicious. And I think there's going to be an, a really uh, reaching out process that is going to be necessary if this, uh, uh, if this restructuring is going to have any chance of success. And it was important, I think, that the president signaled that there is going to be meaningful consultations and dialogue with these stakeholder groups. But ultimately, we can't stop uh, um, and we, we can't try to get off the world. <laughs> you know, the world is changing. Uh, the electricity world is changing very rapidly and we do need to make some uh, interventions here to position not only the utility but the electricity supply industry for the future and the current, uh, the current structure as business has been saying for many many years now is just not fit for the future. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.